Good morning and Merry Christmas. I bid you peace and grace this day and invite you to join me in uh, singing the first two verses of hymn 83 in your hymnal, hymn 83. O come all ye faithful. We begin our worship with a collect of welcoming. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, send to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our anthem of praise this morning is Joy to the World. We'll sing the first and the last verse. The first and the last verse. Joy to the world, the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this day to shine with the brightness of the true light. 
Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you in the Holy Spirit, he lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels all day and all night. They shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, Lift up an ensign over the, pet, the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 97, verse 1 through 12. We will um, say the verse, every other verse. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. The second reading is from a letter of Paul to Titus. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the order of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, this spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Merry Christmas. There are aspects of this ministry that I share with you that I am privileged to carry both on my shoulders and in my heart. And one of those is the honor and the goal and the uh, burden in many ways of seeing someone out of this world, to go to bedside, to anoint them, to say the prayers that we offer up at the time of death and, and to give thanks for a life well lived. That's a deep honor, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, it's something really that I was sort of formed for since I was a child. Grandparents ran a funeral home. My other grandparents were church geeks. My grandfather was a funeral, was a, uh, one grandfather was a funeral director, the other a church organist. You get where the pattern is, right? But the other part of my work that I am deeply in love with and so honored to offer up as a service is to go and bless a newborn child. I've done that actually three times um, for the family sitting in the front pew here. And I've done that for others. I've had the honor of seeing babies into this world and to be able to go and in that first day, bless the child, bless the parents, bless the family, anoint the child and give thanks for its birth. You get to appreciate and give honor to God and glory to God that every child born into this world is a profound and holy gift. And when I read this passage about the shepherds deciding to get up from where they were abiding in the field, watching over their sheep by night, and go and see this thing that they have just been told about, a baby born in Bethlehem, who is to be the son of God, I am so with them in that. And I know exactly that feeling. You don't hesitate. You don't linger. When I get the call to go to bedside, whether it is for someone who is sick or for someone who has just been born, the joke in the office is you don't even hear me leave. Like all you hear is the whoosh of air as I pass by. No Superman involved. Just the gift and the glory of going to be able to visit, anoint, and bless. On this day, when we remember the birth of Jesus, each one of us, as I am privileged to do, now share in that ministry of going and seeing and blessing, and then returning again and giving honor and glory to God. Each to our several places where we live and work and move and have our being, we are given the same good news that the shepherds received. To go and visit this child of promise, this holy baby, to give thanks for his presence in this world, because this world is now a better place. As Isaiah said, this is a city not forsaken, a city beloved of God. This community now is greater for the birth of that child of promise, but we are also greater for every child of promise, including our own selves, as we have come into this world and shared in the baptism of Christ, made one in his body, 
and made one in his blood, consecrated and blessed as that child was in those days. Now we too share in that blessing. And we together have that opportunity, not only to be blessed, but to do that blessing with abundance, with gratitude and with glory to God. Let us go and see this thing that has happened in our midst. There is some corner of your life. There is some person in your network of relationships with whom you have the honor and the glory to share that blessing. Do not hesitate. Pick up the phone. Open the Zoom call. Reach out on social media. Proclaim the good news in whatever vehicle you have been given and honored to be able to do so. And offer up that testimony. For you have been called to attend the birth of the Christ. And in attending the birth of the Christ, we attend the renewal and rebirth of the church this day and always. That blessing of the babe in swaddling clothes is not restricted to the shepherd in the field, nor to the priest in the pulpit. Instead, it is something that is owned by birthright, by everyone here gathered, and by everyone out there watching and listening. We share in that same glorious call, that same summons to proclaim good news to the people, to proclaim release to the captive, to proclaim comfort to those afflicted, to proclaim a day of joy for those who mourn, to offer up that testimony and that blessing, that anointing is not something that is restricted to a few. Instead, by God's grace and love and glory, it is open to all. So as we gather here at Kresh side to see again and bear witness to the birth of the Christ child, laid in a manger, wrapped in bands of swaddling, held close in our hearts by all the memories of Christmas past, let us also in this present moment and for all the future Christmases to come, give thanks to God that we have been summoned away from where we abide to go out into the world to proclaim the good news of Christ born, Christ living, Christ for us, most importantly of all, Christ through us for the world. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if you would be so kind as to rise and join me in an affirmation of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world.
for the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or in any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Chip, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. Father. In your, In your compassion, compassion, forgive, forgive us, us our sins, sins known and, and unknown, unknown, things, things done, done and left undone. undone. And, so and so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. God's peace. Please be seated. <laughs> peace. Peace, Christopher. Peace. Good morning. Merry Christmas. I bid you peace and grace this day. If you're watching with us on social media platforms, we're glad you're here and uh, honored to have your presence, as well as for all of us who ventured out in the rain to get here. Um, it may be a day of frizzy hair, but it's uh, a day of great blessings and glory to God. Um, please do join us as we continue to worship. Uh, we are going to move to the liturgy of the table. Our usher will, of course, guide you and invite you to uh, come out and offer you hand sanitizer. We are doing everything we can to take care of everyone here. Please be aware of that. So thank you all for masking um, as we gather, as well for keeping social distancing and uh, ultimately for practicing good hand hygiene. I, of course, will be wearing a mask throughout the prayer and uh, will also be using hand sanitizer as I manipulate and use the elements um, for communion. Please know that we are happy to welcome you all home. We will be having worship tomorrow at 9 a.m. for the first Sunday after Christmas. It's one of our trifecta days in which we have Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and the first Sunday after Christmas all rolled up into one little quick three-day period. So we're honored to be able to continue to celebrate that. The office at St. Peter's will be closed next week in honor of the holiday and to give everybody a break and a rest. Um, if there are any pastoral concerns, you can reach Mother Ann Uranoski. That number is available in the e-news as well as in the parish office available on our voicemail. We'll make sure you have an awareness of that. My wife and I will be traveling. As well, the wardens, of course, are there for any temporal concerns you may have. They have the keys to the parish and the reins of the sleigh, if you will. So please uh, watch over them. We're very excited about some of the things that are happening in the life of Christ here at St. Peter's. So please do check out the website. You can see the progress on our construction projects as well as 
bear witness to all the great things that are happening. Um, later on today, you will be able to see our shadow box play of the Christmas nativity that our Sunday school did. I wanna give them a round of applause. They did a great job with that. So congratulations. One of our readers, Miss Eleanor is here actually. She is that voice who talks about the child being holy. Um, she's that voice, so give her credit as well. Um, they all did a great job. And of course, our puppeteers, Christopher and Devin, were in, were in high demand as well. We're very honored to have you all here, and we're happy to say welcome home to St. Peter's. And I can't remember, it's, I'm back to normal. I can't remember what my offertory sentence is. Isn't that great? <laughs> all right, here we go. Let me get there. Unless I didn't put one in, that'd be even funnier. There you go. You want to read it with me? Let's do it as together. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Those of you who are watching on uh, Facebook and don't know this, I am notorious for choosing an offertory sentence and then forgetting which one I did and doing the wrong one. So uh, thank you all for being with me on this journey. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark street shineth the everlasting light. 
The hopes and fears of all the years are set in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortal sleep the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. Let us pray. Eternal God, Fill you with joy and peace for blessed with God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for who be upon you and remain with you all. Amen. Go in peace, beloved, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> 